Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we will be looking at the Manfred von Richthofen, the German tier 10 aircraft carrier. Now uh, if you have seen the tech tree of the German aircraft carriers, you will notice that this is the very first time that we're seeing a um, we're seeing an half a tech tree really. So they, what they've done is they've taken on how things were designed in PC because on PC, I think after the carrier rework, I'm not super familiar with PC, but I think after the carrier rework, the uh, the carriers are only on even tiers. And uh, in uh, this is something that we're seeing here as well now. So uh, the August von Parseval was the tier eight and we now have the tier 10, there's no tier nine carrier. I think the amount of XP that you need to grind is uh, beyond 600,000 to get from tier eight to tier 10. So that's a fair amount of, of experience. Obviously some people have already free XP themselves <laughs> across because you are already starting to see some of these things in game. So the, the big question for me here is, uh, given that I actually enjoyed, and, and, and this is the point where I have to put the obligatory trigger warning, I'm not a very good carrier player. I got a bit better, I guess, um, but I'm still very much not comfortable managing a, a large amount of, um, of, of air groups. I, I'm playing on a phone, so a relatively small device. I tend to fat finger things sometimes, and uh, I don't know. It's just not my thing, mostly, carriers. And the, the German carriers was sort of the first line that I actually really enjoyed because of the specifics that the German line had. So the August von Passewald, uh, had um, it wasn't so much about the planes it was more about uh, the sh the ship itself you could do things like get yourself into a into a position where you would lend AA defense and where you would you know and into a, you, you could do aggressive gameplay in a carrier and uh, that's something I enjoyed really so the big question was was for me is it worth going up to tier 10 first of all it's tier 10 <laughs> so uh, is this a carrier worth going up to tier 10? So let, let's have a very quick look at the Manfred von Richthofen. Uh, the very first thing that probably everybody's curious about, what kind of planes are in there? And uh, uh, these are the Focke Wolf 190. So the basically the successor to the BF 109s. And the Focke Wolf 190s uh, were very good planes in the, in the Second World War. They uh, they came in multiple variants. They had a fighter variant. They had ground attack rocket variant. They had long distance variants. There were even a couple of torpedo variants. So this is not completely out of the question or out of the ordinary that you would see these ships, uh, see these these planes on a hypothetical German aircraft carrier. So uh, the dive bombers are the uh, Focke Wolf 190 G8, which is a bit surprising because the G uh, series was the long range model, not the uh, uh, the the F series would have been the uh, the ground attack uh, series. So that would have made more sense. There was even an, I think an experimental uh, F series with torpedo mounts and. Uh, but for some reason they decided to get the G series. So we've got we're seeing the same with the. Um, with the torpedo bombers, this shouldn't have been the G series. This should have been the F series, and because the G series had drop tanks and were meant for long range operations, from what I know. Uh, the fighters are correct though, so the A series would have been um, would have been the uh, the fighters, the the fighter variant of the Focke Wolf 190. So that is uh, that is that. Now, what's uh, special about German aircraft carriers? Well, I already mentioned one thing, and that's the um, that's the aggressive play style. They have ship skills. They have auto secondaries. They don't have manual secondaries. And the dive bombers have uh, armor piercing bombs, so they can score citadels. And the torpedoes are quick. So to start off with, let's compare uh, and that is completely the wrong setup. We're going to need that for the next video. So let's compare the Manfred von Richthofen uh, against the August von Parseval, the, uh, the tier 8 carrier. Okay, so let's see how they differ. Uh, the Manfred von Richthofen has pretty much the same, same ship skills, but does get uh, a sonar, which again sort of uh, hints towards a, a more aggressive playstyle. Uh, the, uh, the the Richthofen is slightly better armored, 
and has some more hit points, but loses out uh, on the maneuverability quite noticeably. So this is more like battleship maneuverability. Uh, the secondary guns are technically the exact same, only that the uh, Richthofen gets 12 twins and the Parsifal gets 6 twins. There is a snag here, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we do get better dive bombers, which have more hit points and do more bomb damage. And we've get a, we, we get three squadrons of four each of these dive bombers. Uh, we get uh, more torpedo bombers with a seven-sized squadron. That is massive. And we get, uh, we get more fighters, but still the two, um, the two three, uh, three, uh, three ship squadrons. So uh, the AA is noticeably better as well. But then again, we are now in tier 10. And the concealment is worse. How what what if we compare this to a and I, I'm sorry sorry if I'm switching here always. Um, what if we compare that to let's say a midway just to you know just to get a bit of a a feel for how good the planes are, because obviously the rest is all not that relevant. But um, the midway has obviously more planes. Uh, she does get uh, the dive bombers are better. And they have a 60% fire chance. The torpedo bombers, uh, even though it's just a five wing, individually, the planes are better. Uh, the torpedoes aren't quite as quick. The fighters are, uh, are better as well. They have more hit points, significantly more hit points, and do more damage. So the theme continues that a German carrier... The planes are okay, I guess, but... Um, it's it's re it doesn't have it get they get outclassed at at times, so you got relatively low hit points at the planes and uh, the damage is comparatively low as well. So what why am I why am I saying that there was a snag in this whole thing? Well, let's begin with a couple of things. First of all, the armor piercing. Obviously, the armor piercing bombs are just going to over penetrate because these are quite powerful at this point. And they will overpenetrate destroyers most of the time, so dropping them on destroyers is all but useless. Which means that you actually don't have an effective weapon against destroyers, because the torpedo bomber wing is having such a big spread that at best you can maybe get four or five torpedoes on target, and you only have one of them. So you do not have an effective way of dealing with destroyers. You do have the auto-secondaries, and you could argue and say, yeah, okay, well... Uh, this thing has auto secondaries, right? This would be murderous, and it's got the secondary overload skill. This would be murderous against destroyers. But this is where the this is where the problems start. So let's um, let's bring the uh, let's bring the Parseval back in because the Parseval has effectively the same, the exact same uh, secondaries, just fewer of them. Now, what you what I would like you to to look at is where these auto secondaries are. You see these are in front and behind the island. You see these turrets here, right? There's three turrets behind and three turrets in front of the island. These turrets can fire on both sides of the ship because they can fire across the flight deck over here and they can fire across the flight deck on that, that direction. These turrets can also fire towards the front of the ship, at least these three, and these three turrets can fire towards the rear of the ship because they, can because they are positioned ab above the flight deck so they can fire over it and hit things behind you. Now let's look at the exact same thing on the Manfred von Richthofen. And uh, there you can see that the secondaries, while she has twice the amount of secondaries, they are side mounted. They are no longer mounted above the flight deck for some reason. So they cannot fire across the flight deck, which means that uh, in as long as you're only firing in one side, at, in one direction, these uh, these secondaries are going to um, are going to effectively have the same firepower as um, the August von Parseval, but at tier ten. So you you need to have ships in range on both sides to make full use of it. The other problem that you're having is if you look at the front of the ship and you, you see all these guns, but these are AA guns. These are not auto secondaries. Um, given that the secondaries are now in are now inlined towards the ship and the there's, there's an awful lot of ship in the way. You can no longer fire these guns forward. What's even worse, you can no longer fire these guns backwards either. Now, why does this matter? 
Imagine you're being rushed by a destroyer. Remember, you have no weapons against destroyers, effectively. You have your torpedo bombers given, but um, you struggle to kill a destroyer with torpedo bombers alone. So, because you can't get all torpedoes on target, no matter how well you aim, and you only have one wing of them. Uh, so, so what do you do? Well, you, uh, you start moving, and you need to angle the ship away from the destroyer. Because what destroyers are doing is they send torpedoes your way. So you do not sit like this towards the destroyer. You sit like that towards the destroyer. Which then has the effect that the ship is not able to fire at the destroyer. It is absolutely incapable of firing rearwards. I've had this problem when I was fighting a Minotaur. The Minotaur was on 500 hit points and I couldn't kill it. Because I had to dodge the torpedoes and the, sh the auto secondaries just can't fire backwards. It is utterly infuriating uh, that 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 is set it, that it is set up like that. The other problem that you're having is obviously you're in tier 10 and you are facing tier 10 AA. Your dive bombers are good against two things: enemy carriers and battleships, even and maybe super cruisers, even regular cruisers. Things like a Minotaur, you're not going to have an awful lot of fun with the dive bombers because A, the Minotaur has a good AA and will just swat half of them out of the sky and B, uh, you'll just overpenetrate this because you actually need to hit uh, you actually need to hit on the Citadel. So if you're imagining if you imagine you have a dive bomber strike and uh, you need to hit the Citadel in order to well get a Citadel a chance to make a Citadel strike uh, Ide the ideal target is something that has a large flat surface and is effectively all citadel. And that's an aircraft carrier. So uh, just like uh, like in the earlier tiers, uh, you, you're, you're, you are very, very good at carrier sniping. Which unfortunately in tier 10 means that you're completely dependent on RNG. Because A... You have, while, for example, the American carrier has a 60% chance of setting a fire, which means you're almost guaranteed to set a fire with every dive bomber drop. With this thing, you need to score citadels. And that is, well, a chance, right? You can two-shot a carrier with this thing. So with two waves, if you use the torpedo bombers as well, you can two-shot a carrier. Which means also that if you're up against an enemy Manfred von Richthofen, and this has happened to me numerous times during testing, uh, if your team either doesn't cover you or you do not have strong AA ships, they it will murder you. You absolutely you do not uh, you absolutely don't stand a chance to defend yourself against an enemy Manfred von Richthofen because the AA is insufficient against the sheer amount of planes coming in, because the the wing is especially the, the torpedo wing is so large, that it just takes forever to shoot these down. Uh, and it's not the torpedoes, it's the dive bombers. Because if you get lucky with the citadels and you get two citadels from, from a strike, that's a lot of damage. So if your team doesn't have a Worcester or a Friesland, and the enemy team has a Worcester or a Friesland, or a Minotaur, or anything, or, or, um, uh, or something American, like a, a Des Moines, um, a, any of the battleships, right? Uh, a Vermont, my goodness. So if they position such that they cover the enemy aircraft carrier and your team doesn't or doesn't have the ships, uh, there's very little you can do. Because the planes, if they're up against AA, will fall like flies and you will be deplaned very quickly. All right, uh, long rant here. So let's have a quick look at the setup before we get into some gameplay. Uh, I have actually not chosen the uh, the better dive bombers. I've tried both, but um, I've actually used a combination here of uh, prep uh, reduced preparation time because it is a bit longer than it used to be. And I'm actually using the hangar modification one to get additional dive bombers um, on, at the cost of some torpedo bombers. And uh, yeah, there's method to this because the torpedo uh, the dive bombers are four squadrons. They get shot down very easily. The torpedo bombers are seven squadrons. It takes a long time to shoot them down because I think, and I might be wrong here, but I think what happens is that all planes get damaged until they start getting shot down. And uh, it, it takes actually quite a... The torpedo wing is rather tanky compared to the dive bomber wings, and you will lose a lot of these planes. Especially if, like me, you're actually very, not very good at it and the enemy, uh, the enemy carrier is capturing your, your fighters. But even without fighters, right? It's just against regular AA, your planes will, fly, will fall like flies. 
Now I have the full AA setup here, and I would like you to keep that in mind. I have the full AA setup uh, with with range and and damage, which gets if we're looking at the stats, which gets me with the historical camo on to 392 large caliber AA and 335 small caliber AA with a good range. Uh, plus, you obviously have the, the defensive AA2, which doubles these. So, in theory, you should be able to, you know, support your team with your AA. That's what this is for. That's why the ship has this skill. Unfortunately, it also means that it, it is also a question of matchmaking because you are in tier 10. And if you get spotted in tier 10, um, there's Christopher Columbus out there. There are Vermonts out there, Yamatos. There's all kinds of stuff that can blow you out of the water from 15 kilometers away without you being able to do an awful lot about it. So you just can't play this aggressively in a tier 10 game in this sort of carrier. Uh, the historical camo, if we look at it, it gives us more hit points, bomb damage, torpedo damage, and better surface detection. So all good things considered. And for the commander, I've done the aerobatic maneuvers, obviously, for return speed. Uh, I do have the dogfight specialist for better fighters. You could argue that you in, in the first module you should use the improved fighters. Um, I don't know, I'm just not very good with fighter management because there are too many air wings that I need to control, so uh, that's just the thing. But you you, um, you do want the battlefield support for the extra sonar and, uh, and defensive AA. Uh, obviously the air defense expert skill. I, I have taken generalist here instead of the recon and surveillance. It doesn't make an awful lot to use exploit weakness because you can't use you can't set fires. You can flood, but you can't set fires easily. And uh, this this is quite useful if you are dealing with um, if you are coming under HE spam or anything like that. Um, and yes, I've I've used the close quarters combat expert for better dispersion on the secondaries. All right, uh, let's get into some games. And um, please do keep in mind that. Uh, I am not a very good carrier player. There are people out there who can do monstrous amounts of damage with this thing, um, if the matchmaking, if the matchmaking runs in their favor. But then that's the same is true for any other carrier. Uh, but yeah, just just as a disclaimer. In the first battle, we are up against an enemy, Manfred von Richthofen, Großer Kurfürst, Isomo, Double Isomo, Seattle, Somers, and Yugomo. So uh, not actually an an amazing amount of AA. On the enemy team, we do have a Montana and a Smolensk on our side, as well as a Drake. So we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, but uh, like I said, one of the plays that you kind of can make, but don't have to make in this, is to uh, go for the enemy carrier. Just because if you're lucky with your citadels, and it's pure luck really, then you can you can two, uh, you can get an enemy carrier down in two strikes. So. I am trying to be useful with my dive bombers and scout something, and I am trying to get my fighters not captured and actually get them back, uh, get them to send uh, to go back home, and bring the enemy fighters along. Hopefully, we'll see how well that turns out. And I am heading to forward towards an island. Uh, I know that there are two destroyers, so I know which way they're coming. And uh, spotted destroyers are good. I'm lending AA support to my team, and um, as you can see, the enemy carrier is going straight for me. And that was a single carrier strike from the enemy Manfred von Richthofen that took more than half of my hit points off. Uh, there's the Sommers. Now I am using my dive bombers here in desperation because there's nothing else really. But as you can see, uh, they're completely useless. They don't do anything. And uh, I'm already down to half hit points just from that first strike from, from the enemy Richthofen. Uh, and so far I've, I've done one over penetration against the Sommers. So uh, you, I can use my torpedo bombers. But like I said, I mean, look at the the cone, right? <laughs> uh, the destroy uh, the, the cone is larger than the, than the whole destroyer because there's just so many of them. So uh, even dropping them like this, and they are pretty quick, I'm not going to get more than like uh, three or four on target, really, because literally there's not enough destroyer to hit with these um, uh, with these torpedoes. So the only thing that the Richthofen is really good at is things like battleships. And uh, my, my team has decided that the left flank is completely uh, irrelevant, so the destroyer can do whatever it wants. Uh, I am trying to drop something on the Große Kur first, but uh, obviously I'm coming once again under air attack by the enemy from, uh, by the enemy Richthof. And I got lucky here that I didn't get deleted, because that was only two strike wings, I think, and uh, the torpedo wing is, is going somewhere else. Otherwise I would have been already dead at this point. 
if he had gotten a citadel, I would have been already dead. So I have I've once again spotted the Somers on on our left flank with my dive bombers, but uh, as you get as you've seen, the dive bombers do absolutely nothing, and we still don't know where the other destroyer is. So I have a pretty good idea. Yep, there he is. <laughs> you see him right there. Yeah, there's the Yugomo. Well, great. <laughs> there come there comes a torpedo drop, but I think that was from the Richthofen. That might have been gone the other way. So I am switching on the uh, the secondary overload, but the Yugomo smokes up. And I do need to give broadside sort of to the Yugomo, but there comes also the Somers from the other side. So um, I, I'm just leaving my fighters at home, trying to defend myself against any more uh, any more Richthofen incoming, getting set on fire by the Yugomo, and I'd obviously now need to get away from the torpedoes. Still desperately trying to do something about that enemy destroyer with my completely useless dive bombers and setting the third wing out to the other flank. Um, there's, there's the Yugomo. I am obviously running at this point and uh, at this angle, um, my my secondaries aren't doing an awful lot, so because they they, they just can't reach it anymore. And uh, but I do have to. I, I am spotted obviously from the uh, because of the relatively terrible surface detection, and I am spotted by the destroyer. Plus, I'm getting constantly set on fire by things. And yeah, like I said, the the enemy Richthofen could have killed me twice over already by now if he was interested. I'm keeping the Yugomo spotted, who's now in our capture circle. Uh, I'm going to have to try and get myself behind an island, so at least I'll be safe from battleship fire from the enemy cap. And uh, and now I'm just trying to do my level best here to help out with that Yugomo. Uh, he's obviously unspotted at this point, but at least uh, I think the Smolensk is having enough sense to come back. So torpedo drop out against the Yugomo, and that was, yeah, two torpedo hits. You see that that's what I mean, right? Uh, if they even if they don't sail com perfect broadside, you can't hit them with these torpedoes either. So you're completely helpless against destroyers. Uh, your armor-piercing bombs do absolutely nothing if they can even hit. And the uh, I'm still trying because I, at least I'm trying to get him spotted. But I think the Yugo was actually dead at this point. So uh, haven't been haven't been really noticing that. That uh, I think it was the Smolensk that killed him. And uh, we are ahead on points. Uh, but uh, enemy Richthofen takes out the Drake, and uh, the Somers is still around here somewhere. So uh, at this point, <laughs> I, I do have to admit that I didn't realize that the Yugomo was dead. So um, I'm still sending my torpedo bombers down there, but there comes the enemy Richthofen just to finish me off. So either way around, and I think around about this time, I'm realizing that the, um, that the Yugomo is dead. So I am trying to just uh, drop my torpedoes, uh, send my torpedoes in the direction of the Großer Kur first and see if I can still do something. But at this point, the enemy Richthofen just um, ends my misery here. And uh, I haven't been sticking around because we've obviously lost this game. But um, and I think the enemy of enemy Richthofen took the um, took the MVP there. So uh, the thing that I'm trying to that I'm trying to uh, to point out really is the absolute lack of, of being able to do anything about destroyers and what you have to focus on. Because the only things that you can really hurt are battleships and obviously the enemy carrier. So in the second battle, we're in epicenter, cage mode, and we're up against uh, Hakuryu, Montana, Kurfürst, Alsace, and uh, Shimakaze. We do have a Shimakaze and a gearing of our own, so technically, in Epicenter, we should have the destroyer advantage. Obviously, the Hakuryu is capable of doing something about that. But uh, we'll find out if it becomes necessary. So once again, I am planning, given where I'm, I'm, I'm spawning here, I am planning to make myself useful and get close in the carrier and at least, um, you know, have a faster cadence of getting things getting things out there. I'm sending the first, uh, first fighter wing somewhere in the center, second fighter wing to follow up. Uh, just staying at home and then uh, I'll try to capture the enemy fighters with the first wing and just bring them back to where my second wing is already waiting uh, and uh, at the same time I can use that to do some scouting. Enemy carrier doesn't seem to be wanting to bring his fighters out so um, I I'm just gonna pull mine back and start um, uh, I don't know if I captured that wing there or not and start bringing out the dive bombers. Now obviously um, having this being done to me, the whole carrier snipe, I, I generally frown upon this practice. I don't like it because it feels like an absolute waste. Um, but if the uh, if the enemy team doesn't have an awful lot of AA in position, it is definitely a play you can make. So I am sending out the, um, there's the Alsace, I'm sending out the, um, the dive bombers and there's the Haku. 
and then we'll send the torpedo bombers out as well. Because if you get lucky, that happens. Uh, and uh, yeah, that happens as well. And that's a, that's a, and that's a third of the Haku gone. That could have been actually better still. Uh, now I am in the island position where I want it to be. I have to be obviously careful with that Alsace because I'm obviously spotted. I'm switching on the secondary overload just to, you know, to get the secondaries to work. I'm going to try and tuck myself in behind that island and see what I can do there. Um, the uh, Our destroyers are bimbling around somewhere at the outer ring, so um, it's up to the bots to capture the inner ring. And um, uh, while I'm while I'm just uh, using my fighters to try and do a little bit, uh, another se uh, seven torpedo hits on the Haku, and uh, I'm just trying to use my fighters a little bit. But you see, he's he's down to half hit points. He's healing, obviously. And um, with my second strike, if I'm lucky, I should be able to just take him out. So. Uh, as much as I dislike this sort of play, and he's trying to take revenge, but um, uh, obviously he had to fly over some of my AA, whereas he is uh, positioned out in the open and and is more or less on his own. Uh, as much as I dislike this kind of play, it is an effective way of playing it, because uh, this is literally the, the strength of this ship. And it looks like our uh, we got some bomb hits in, but uh, no citadels, so the Haku survives. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's a it's a game of luck, right? At this point, if if you get lucky and you get the citadel strikes, you can two you can two shot an enemy carrier. If you get unlucky and you just get semi pens, then nothing much happens, right? So uh, I did get my fighters captured there, but I think uh, we've got the upper hand actually and can destroy some enemy aircraft. Uh, there is the enemy Shima. We're holding all the capture circles at this point, so I'm not really concerned about the Shima. Um, there are three battleships out there. I'm just trying to help the Vermont out, but obviously Vermont doesn't need an awful lot of hit, uh, of help. And yeah, once again, getting the torpedo strike ready. Uh, Haku is, is kind of, uh, sort of fed up with this, so he's moving around. Um, torpedo bombers taking taking their sweet time turning around, but that should still become on target. Uh, so uh, it's five it's five torpedo hits, so it, it took three strikes to take out the Haku, but still. Uh, generally around about four, three to four minutes remaining, you should be able to have to kill the enemy carrier if he doesn't get any uh, AA cover from the enemy team. If he does, then there's absolutely no chance of doing that. And if the enemy carrier is a, is a Richthofen, then they will do that to you and there's nothing you can do about it. So it, it completely depends on everything. And there, yeah, there goes the Hakuryu. Haku is dead. Uh, just the remaining, um, there, there are two remaining torpedo wings coming in, uh, but uh, they're not going to do an awful lot. So now there's the Shimakaze left. Uh, obviously, team calls out help with the Shima, and um, I'm just shooting down the remaining torpedo wings from the Haku here, who he cannot control anymore because he's been killed. Uh, and at this point, uh, I can, uh, yeah, I can just, uh, I can just try and do something about the destroyer. But like I said, the torpedo, even the torpedo bombers, are not particularly effective. I am getting shot at by the battleship over there, and the torpedo bombers are not effect particularly effective. But maybe I can just dissuade the Shimakaze from going out into. Um, and that was a terrible drop, but uh, I still get, I think, two, yeah, two torpedo hits in. Which, even even if you do a perfect drop, is about as much as you're going to get because uh, the. Uh, because of the just massively widespread of the of the torpedoes. So now I'm I'm sending my dive bombers against the Montana, which is obviously generally not a great idea. And I'm trying to use my fighters to respot that um, that Shima, but we're so far ahead on points that they will have to kill us all. And uh, the carrier is is, is dead, so uh, our destroyers have basically a free reign at this point. And I, I just have to, I just have to get some drops in. I'm not even going to bother with the Shima, to be honest. I'm just going to keep him, try and keep him spotted, because there's, there's really nothing I can do against this thing. If I was using the dive bombers, they wouldn't do absolutely anything. If I did the use the torpedo bombers, I would get in what maybe two, three thousand damage per strike. Um, yeah, I, I would have to spend the whole game trying to sink the Shimakaze with these things. So uh, it's really not happening. Uh, I, I might as well. Yeah, they took a really nasty hit there from the Montana, but. Um, uh, I am, I think, in, uh, I am, well, trying to uh, to make myself useful still. But uh, like I said, we're so far ahead on points. The next kill is going to seal it. So if Vermont gets, even if Vermont gets sunk by that Shimakaze, uh, I would love to help. But this is really nothing I can do about. Um, and a friendly Shima has taken out the Monty, so that is game. Is that enjoyable? See, this is the big question for me. For me, it isn't. Because um, I, I dislike the whole capability of being able to snipe the enemy carrier, not because it's I feel like it's a dick move or something. I, it's um, 
but but it is it is not a fair fight because no carrier on his own is capable of defending himself against the Manfred von Richthofen. Uh, and it is completely luck-based, because if I'm lucky and get three, four, five citadels in, which is easy to do, I can two-shot an enemy carrier with two, two strikes, and we're, we're, four minutes into, uh, we're four minutes remaining in the game and the enemy carrier is dead. If I'm unlucky, it takes a lot longer. If the enemy team has AA and my team doesn't, I can't do anything. If the enemy team has a Richthofen and has AA and my team doesn't or doesn't position themselves around me, I'm dead. So uh, there's just no skill involved in this, I feel. It's, it's really just um, it's, a, it's a dice throw if you're able to take out the enemy carrier before he, he takes you out. And I have been taken out by enemy Richthofens like three, four times while I was testing. And it, it, just, it just becomes utterly frustrating because you end the game with 20,000 damage after, after three minutes and there's just absolutely nothing you can do about it. Um, the only thing the carrier is effective against is battleships and, one, and, and enemy carriers. Against cruisers, no, not much, because most of the time the dive bombers are going to miss. At least you can get the torpedoes in, but you only have one strike wing. And uh, the dive bombers will easily overpenetrate light cruisers and just not do anything. The citadel chance is relatively low, such that, well, just like with everything else, really, such that, um, yes, you can get a couple of citadels, but you will be farming them mostly against enemy carriers because that's where it hurts. So, and you can't play in, uh, you can't play aggressively because A, everything battleship-wise, it has big enough guns to blow you out of the water. And uh, so you can't really lend AA support like you can in tier eight just because of the more static tier 10 gameplay. You also can't use the auto secondaries for anything because if you were trying to defend yourself from destroyers, you would be uh, giving Bauer Stern to destroyers and the auto secondaries can't shoot in that direction. Uh, everything at, for everything else, they don't have the range. And if you're in range of auto secondaries, you're also spotted, which means you're dead. So for me, the tier 10, the Manfred von Richthofen, um, no. It's, uh, I think the, the whole concept of an aggressive carrier with AA capabilities sort of falls apart at tier 10 for me. Uh, it, it promotes, uh, like it, it's, it's super luck based. If you're up against, the, 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 uh, the planes are relatively weak. So if you're up against an enemy team that has a lot of AA, you'll be deplaned after, for, for after five minutes. If you're, uh, if you're up against an enemy team that has no AA, you're gonna be doing an incredible amount of damage if you're lucky enough. But um, it, it just doesn't feel like as useful as it could be, in my opinion. And um, I, I don't enjoy traditional carrier gameplay that much anyway. The thing that got me into this was that up to, tier eight, up to and including tier eight, I could you know play aggressively and um, use the ship as much as I would use the planes. In tier 10, that's just not something that happens. And that leaves you with a carrier with probably about weakest in class planes. You do get a you do get a fair amount of them, but you also get relatively easily deplaned, and the whole setup around aggressive gameplay is gone. So um, personally, I will not waste uh, my XP. But then again, I don't think anybody expected me to. And uh, I, I know people have done 160,000 points of damage in this carrier. Absolutely, can happen. And if you're if you're really good at it, then and and you're enjoying this capability, then uh, maybe this is an interesting slant for you. But for me personally, not so much. That's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.